Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Greg Newman. I'm the manager of planning with the City of White Rock. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to start tonight's public information meeting. Uh, before I turn it over to the applicants, I was going to offer a brief overview of the proposal. I thought uh, I would just sort of throw my video on quickly so you can kind of get a sense of the the face to the, the, the voice, but um, we'll get started and uh, there will be a question and answer period a bit later, but uh, we'll start with giving the applicants an opportunity to give an overview of their proposal. So uh, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll give a brief overview of the application. It's a proposed cannabis retail store uh, at 15053 Marine Drive. Uh, the application requires an amendment to the City of White Rocks zoning bylaw. It requires a temporary use permit and a liquor cannabis license referral, which goes to the province. The purpose of tonight's meeting is really to give the applicants an opportunity to inform uh, you, the public, of their the intention of their proposal and the details of their applications and, and their business uh, to receive feedback and questions from you and to hopefully address some of your early interests and concerns. The format of the meeting, it's a live event, so um, it's being held through Microsoft Teams. It is being recorded and we will post uh, the recorded version of this uh, meeting on the city's uh, YouTube page. Um, the application is being presented by Seed and Stone. As I mentioned, I'll turn the floor over to them uh, shortly. Uh, when we get to the question and answer section of uh, the event, uh, I just wanted to put everyone on sort of notice that um, we receive all the questions and comments, the kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, we won't publish the comments that are perhaps offensive or uh, disrespectful or perhaps uh, repetitive. I will publish the comments that are expressing opposition to the proposal in addition to those that are expressing support. It's just we won't publish things that are offensive. Um, additional questions that you may have, you're welcome to send to me by email. My email is on the screen there. Um, as I mentioned, we're recording this video, so if you know of someone that wanted to attend that perhaps couldn't, um, you may wish to send them uh, to, the, to the recorded video on the city's web page. The subject property, as I mentioned, is at 15053 Marine Drive. You can kind of see it in the aerial image there. It's just north of uh, the City of White Rock Pier. Uh, so sort of in the heart of um, the city's waterfront beach area. This is an image of, of the subject property. So it's the former uh, giraffe restaurant. You can see it in the, in the middle of those two buildings there uh, with the development signage in front. So that's that's the property within which the cannabis retail store is being proposed. So the application is, as I mentioned, a rezoning to allow a cannabis retail store. The uh, store would be tied to a temporary use permit if it were approved. Uh, the permit has a limit of three years. Uh, there is an opportunity to ex extend uh, the temporary use permit for another uh, period of three years. After that time, if the applicant wished, um, they could apply to rezone to allow for the cannabis retail store as a permanent use within the property. There is no enlargement of the existing building proposed. Um, the zoning bylaw does require two parking spaces for uh, this use based on the scale of the use. Um, the site currently has zero parking spaces. The applicant is looking at options either to provide potentially on-site parking to the, to the north of the existing building or potentially to provide uh, cash in lieu of parking, um, which uh, if that were the approach that was ultimately supported uh, by council, then it would uh, be cash that goes into a reserve fund that's then dedicated towards parking resources in the area. There are no changes proposed to the uh, existing CR3 zone standards, so no, no request for extension of the building beyond say the height that is currently permitted within the zone. Um, or any other changes to the actual zone itself. The official community plan uh, recognizes the lands as being within the waterfront village land use designation. Uh, within this designation, the OCP uh, supports a mix of uh, commercial and multifamily residential uses um, that support kind of the tourist population of, of the city of White Rock and residents, of course, as well. So with that introduction, I, as I say, I want to give the floor to the applicants. This is their opportunity to kind of present <clears throat> you with their proposal. So 
With this, I'll turn it over to uh, David Hollander with Seed and Stone. And David, I don't know if you have anyone else on the team that you wish uh, to introduce as, as co-presenters, but I'll turn yeah. it over to you at this point. Wonderful. Right. Everybody can see uh, the PowerPoint so far? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, to all our guests, my name is Dave Hollander. I'm the operations manager for Seed and Stone, and thank you for joining us today as we introduce you to Seed and Stone. Myself, along with VP of Development, Chris Griswich, stand here today before you with a heavy heart. Our CEO, Vikram Sashdeva, was hospitalized over the weekend. Against doctor's orders and our wishes, Vikram is in the room today from his hospital bed. His commitment to Seed and Stone is so strong, he simply refused to miss this. Vikram has over 20 years of retail experience. He is the current owner of multiple Subway restaurants, which employs over 30 people. Prior to Subway, Vic worked with the BC Liquor Distribution Branch at the retail level for over seven years before earning an associate degree in hospitality and retail. Chris, has 15 years of work experience in project management. He holds an associate degree in business and has owned and operated Lotto Ticket Center for the BC Lottery Corporation for eight year, 18 years. I will be filling in for Vikram during this presentation and I would like to begin with a short video. My name is Vikram Shizdeva and I am the founder and CEO of Seed and Stone. You may ask why we call it Seed and Stone. Seed represents the beautiful landscape of British Columbia, the greenery that surrounds us and the stone represents the mountains. The vision for Seed and Stone is to create an environment that is welcoming to the new user or to the user that has been in the illicit or grey market. We welcome you all to come join us and experience the difference at Seed and Stone. Hi there, I'm Ian, the manager at Seed and Stone. At Seed and Stone, we focus on giving the customer an exceptional experience. That includes educating them from the time they walk in the door to the time they leave. It's important to us that the customer knows exactly what's getting into their hand. Seed and Stone believes in leading by example. Community engagement is the heart of everything Seed and Stone does. We want to incorporate ourselves into the communities that we establish our storefronts in. We provide 1% of our sales and up to $10,000 yearly towards parks and recreation. To any municipality or city we, we go into and open a storefront. We hire locally, make sure we train them properly. We pay a living wage as well as dental and medical to all the people that get hired and work with Seed and Stone. We want to create an environment where there's happy staff that in turn leads to happy customers. The best part is there's over 100 strains to choose from. We have, we have a huge selection of CBD products, THC products, edibles, we have drinks, we have topicals, so you name it, we are a one-stop shop. Come check out the unique experience we have created for you at Seed and Stone. We want to emphasize that Seed and Stone is not just here to sell cannabis. We are a collection of passionate, caring Canadian citizens here to educate, inform, and contribute our expertise on safe cannabis purchasing and consumption. Calculations indicate that Canada's legal cannabis market will hit $7.8 billion in 2022, growing at a 27% pace annually. Our first store, located in Chilliwack, BC, has shown that legal cannabis can and will benefit communities, and any negative impacts can be responsibly mitigated to ensure safe and positive experiences around purchasing cannabis. The incredible growth in economic activity is creating jobs, providing labor, income, and elevating other industries like transportation, food, tourism, banking, and construction, just to name a few. 
Reports suggest the job, job growth will increase by about 21% by 2022, which is significantly larger compared to almost any other current industry. As of February 2019, the cannabis industry hired approximately 160,000 workers. By 2022, that number will double. With sales come taxes. From October 2018 to the end of March 2019, Ottawa and the provinces made $186 million from various taxes on cannabis. Seed and Stone has already paid over $100,000 in taxes during its first six months in Chilliwack. These tax revenues can provide funding to public health programs, law enforcement, drug treatments, mental health centers, as well could be used to promote educational campaigns such as school programs around anti-bullying and drug safety. A couple of things we noticed since opening our Chilliwack location. Firstly, there is an ongoing shift to government regulated retail cannabis. Legalization has opened the market to a more sophisticated clientele, along with various segments of consumers. And these consumers aren't just looking for retail, there's a demand for retail excellence. Consumers are wanting more than just a transaction, they're looking for an experience, whether online or offline. These consumers are demanding high quality products at a range of competitive price points. Also, privacy and security when purchasing are key considerations for consumers. Uh oh. Oh. Seed and Stone not only aspires to be a great retail store, we want to be a great neighbor. Seed and Stone supports any form of good neighbor agreement, and above that, Seed and Stone will install carbon filters in any area storing cannabis to limit potential odors. We will install no less than 12 state-of-the-art security cameras, both inside and outside, monitored 24-7. Along with additional lighting, a private security team will do up to 10 site checks between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. to ensure no crimes are being committed. For the first year the store is open, we will have a uniform security guard checking two pieces of ID upon entry and reminding customers that no consumption can take place in or around this location. We will also bring our recycling and graffiti removal programs to White Rock to keep the area clean. Social responsibility posters will be strategically placed, warning of the dangers of driving while intoxicated, cannabis in pregnancy, and the dangers of cannabis in youth. Seed and Stone recognizes its role as a responsible corporate citizen and neighbor within the community and agrees to work with the city and all its departments to resolve concerns on an ongoing and continuous basis. Seed and Stone is also committed to donating 1% of their annual net profits up to $10,000 every year. This contribution could go towards revitalizing the pier, parking, or any other programs seen fit by council. Community is at the heart of everything we do. It's more than just building beautiful retail stores. It's about being part of our communities and making a positive contribution towards our neighbors and fellow business owners. We have partnered with Songi's native band to bring our elevated cannabis experience to Vancouver Island, and we have already reached out and plan to partner with the RCMP to incorporate crime prevention through environmental design. CPTED, not only reduces crime, but also the fear of crime through property development. A clean, well-lit, security-patrolled community is less likely to fall victim to property crime and violence. Seed and Stone chose this White Rock location for multiple reasons. This location falls outside any distance regulation from schools and daycares. By putting a cannabis retail store in this location, Consumers will no longer need to travel long distances to purchase their cannabis, and more importantly, this will reduce the amount of gray market dispensaries still operating in White Rock. Seed and Stone's elegant yet warm and inviting storefront and interior will blend into the level of class known and inspected in White Rock. A once bustling boardwalk has been replaced with boarded up storefronts and homeless setting up camp. A Seed and Stone location will bring a needed kick to the local economy, Currently, if you look at the map, all stores in red 
are either vacant or closed for the season. White Rock staples like Little India are gone. You will also notice a cleanup process has begun. Additionally, adding frosted windows and eliminating the term cannabis from our signage, we are able to limit exposure to youth and vulnerable people. Our after hours surveillance team will not only remove vagrants, but also negate any risk of crime being committed overnight. As every good neighbor should, Stephen Stone has reached out to the city and neighboring businesses in an effort to allevi alleviate any concerns. Through our conversations, one thing stood out, and rightly so. There was concern as to smoking cannabis in the area surrounding the store. And please let me be clear, not only will cannabis not be consumed in the area surrounding our store, no cannabis products will be opened. This should help alleviate any concern of volume or smells. The chart before you shows that less than one fifth of seed and stone sales were for pre-rolled cannabis. Our top seller these days is in edibles and beverages. More individuals are purchasing from government licensed retail cannabis stores, non-combustible products, which benefit not only the user, but also the environment. Cigarettes are not available in the store and all our staff are non-smoking. There will be no cigarette butts anywhere located. Unknown to us, multiple news outlets picked up the story and the comments were overwhelmingly in favor of cannabis retail at this proposed location. Consistently, there was comments of excitement, community members looking for competition, which will include lower prices. Chilliwack has nine stores right now. All stores are thriving and the winners, the consumers. Other common points were related to the vacancies on Marine Drive and how businesses are looking for a little kick that Seed and Stone could bring to the strip. One year ago, there was two vacant storefronts next to Seed and Stone Chilliwack. Since then, both has been leased and a new restaurant is preparing to open. Attention to detail is followed throughout every Seed and Stone store. As you see here, our Victoria location, in partnership with the Songhees Native Band, shares the exact same characteristics as our Chilliwack store. White Rock should expect nothing less than the warm, inviting, elegant designs that we bring to all our stores. Lastly, I'd like to talk a little bit about a timeline. Seed and Stone could have a store open within 90 days of receiving any license. We're projecting a June 2021 opening to acquire our business licenses, have our grand opening. In May 2021, we put on a White Rock hiring fair. We offer a living wage and medical benefits to members of the White Rock community. An education expert has joined the team and has created SOPs, employee manuals, and has developed employee training system that we will bring to White Rock. Building permits, designs and construction will take place before that. And we are anticipating February, March, at some point in the new year, our first and second readings. With that, I would like to pass it over to Chris for a final word. Hi everyone. Uh, I want to thank the city of White Rock and as well as the community for your time being here and giving us the opportunity to serve people of White Rock. If approved, we will do utmost everything to make sure that the store is operated without any issues to the public and the community. I am personally available to you 24 seven to make seed and stone White Rock a reality and along with that, an economic boom for the community. I would like to open the floor up to any questions you guys have. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chris, and uh, thanks, Dave, uh, for your, your overview. I'm just going to share my screen and just kind of wrap up on how we're going to open up the floor to questions now. So, 
Hopefully, I see we have about uh, 16 people uh, attending the meeting at this point. So if you want to, um, there's a Q&A function in the uh, top right of your screen. You should be able to click on the little uh, icon that looks like a question mark within a caption. And so I'll start to publish um, comments that I can see that we have and appreciate the comments that people are providing. Uh, for the most part, I'll, I think I'll defer to the applicants to respond to these questions. And um, the one thing I wanted to mention to those that are participating in the meeting tonight, we do have an online comment form that's available at the, the, uh, the City Right Rock uh, events calendar. So if you go to this link here that you can see on the screen and you go to uh, December 2nd date, you'll see uh, additional details regarding tonight's meeting. And within there, there's a digital comment form. So those participating uh, in the meeting tonight um, and others that you that you know that may be interested in this, if you could have, uh, if you could complete the forms, then those completed forms would be presented to Council in a future report. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can also send comments direct to myself, uh, Greg Newman, at the email there on the screen. So with that, I'm going to start to publish uh, some of the comments we're receiving, and I'll I'll direct them over to the applicants. Um, perhaps we'll just start with a couple asking about your affiliations with other. Um, I don't know if they're producers or investors, um, it's not specific to the application, but um, if you wish to respond to those. So I'll just publish a couple here that speak to your affiliations with um, Zenibus and Monarch Group, if uh, one of the applicants wish to, to speak to that. Hi, Greg. Uh, I just see there's um, in which order would you like uh, the um, uh, Q&A uh, to proceed? So hopefully uh, if you if you got the Q&A sort of bubble open there, yep. there's um, there's new questions and then in the middle there's published. So I'll be I'll publish the comments as they come in and if you can respond to the published comments. So uh, the first couple that I pushed through there are a question about your affiliation with Zenibus oh. and Monarch Group. Um, so we have no affiliation to 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 Zenibus. Um, we just uh, work. We are Seed and Stone as a standalone uh, company, and uh, we just uh, receive uh, support uh, from um, Monarch as just we use their office uh, at this time. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, Next uh, comment here is what happens to the existing greenery at the site? Does the applicant commit to keeping that in place so that the frontage is impacted or not affected? Yeah, we intend to actually keep the greenery. It actually goes with our uh, store design. And so obviously with the current um, you know, uh, greenery at this moment, we will definitely uh, make it um, look a lot better than it is right now. But our intention at this moment is to keep it uh, the way it is. It, this will also help uh, with, you know, um, you know, people, uh, vulnerable youth, and um, able not to see what uh, the story looks on like inside. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe just on that um, point, Chris, there was a comment uh, regarding the um, the frosted windows and a concern being raised about um instances of robbery so I'll, I'll publish that comment maybe just take a second to read it there okay. so yes you know uh, so obviously we have uh, security that will be uh will have security there throughout the day and we are committed to have that throughout uh, the first year um and with uh, obviously right now the frosted windows are only um not a requirement by the bc uh bc government so if so fit you know we can always remove them but if uh, the city allows you know we can also put them up i'm going to just publish a couple uh comments so there are a couple comments um, just expressing non sort of a lack of support uh, for the application, um, one concern about the 
Um, the potential for increased consumption of cannabis near the store on the beach. I don't. I, I know. Um, I think Mr. Hollander spoke briefly to that. But if you wanted to elaborate, I know that has come up in in some of the correspondence. Well, you know what we have in our one of the slide, uh, Dave. If you you want to share uh, that we had, you know, um, that all the cannabis, you know, in uh, our store. And not is not available to be consumed. Also, uh, we are going to have uh, security that will um, patrol the area to make sure that um, none of the people are smoking outside within 30 meters. So that's a requirement that we are as a student zone is making. However, you know, uh, and we will be educating our customers not to be able to smoke uh, within the vicinity of uh, Marine Drive. Okay, thank you. There's a question about um, Indigenous Bloom, which is another cannabis retail store uh, further down on Marine Drive, and just whether or not there's a need for another store in this area of the city. Well, you know, I like uh, Dave uh, Hollander has mentioned, you know, uh, competition is always uh, good uh, for any retail business that you're creating. So, um, so far, you know, with another store, especially on the on the West Beach, we'll be able to provide uh, competitive prices and and cater to the needs of uh, White Rock. Uh, so I'll take the next couple here. Um, there's some questions about why the city of White Rock is entertaining um, this application uh, because it's outside of the town center. And so the, as I mentioned at the beginning, the application is to rezone um, the property to allow for a cannabis retail store outside of the town centre. Um, there are two approaches that the applicant could have taken to making this proposal. They could have uh, applied for rezoning to allow for a cannabis retail store as a permanent uh, use within the property. Um, alternatively, the approach that they've taken is to rezone um, section uh, 4.1.3 of the zoning bylaw, which is a section that speaks to um, the opportunity for cannabis retail stores in the town center specifically through a temporary use permit. And so what the applicants are requesting is notwithstanding the limitations on where a cannabis retail store can be in the town center, they're asking to be allowed a temporary use permit outside of the town center within this property specifically. So any landowner is able to make an application uh, to council to change the zoning of the property. That's what this applicant has done. They have taken the approach of applying for a temporary use permit. Um, Chris, you may wish to speak to this, but I, I believe the intention based on our earlier discussions was to ensure that the community was uh, receptive to the use for a shorter duration, a three year limit. And then uh, at the end of that three year period, there's an opportunity to apply to council for an extension um, and, and again, that's a three year extension. So if um, if the use was supportable after that, then they would have to apply for another rezoning to allow for the use on a permanent basis. So um, that's the nature of the applications. I don't know, Chris, if you want to add. Yeah, I mean, we chose uh, we chose Marine Drive, uh, you know, for a couple of reasons. We have seen especially the particular unit that we chose uh, as is a need, uh, you know, the people who are the neighbors, you know, um, we can bring traffic and it's shown in the statistics that, you know, uh, cannabis uh, stores can bring traffic uh, to certain areas. And so, and we felt that, you know, this is a vibrant uh, location and um, and we can serve uh, accordingly to, to the city of Whitehawk. Okay, now the next question is, um, I know Mr. Hollander had mentioned whether or not your staff smoke, um, but there's a question about whether or not um, yeah, I, I should I should be clear on that. Uh, the only thing that uh, you would have seen the owner and uh, anyone else smoke on the internet would be cannabis. They're not cigarette smoking. Uh, we are all non-smokers. Okay, but but you, I certainly the staff does smoke cannabis, although not around the store. Okay. Um, question, are you an American or a Canadian company? Is your product Canadian? What is the connection with WikiLeaf? Who are they? Uh, we're 100% uh, Canadian and I have 
no connection with Wiki Leaf or no any relation to them. Okay. Uh, question about where customers would line up, uh, knowing that it's a bit of a constrained um, section on the sidewalk there along Main Drive. Yeah, that's a really great question, actually. Um, at this point, with COVID, lineups are a concern because we will keep a limited amount of, of uh, people coming into the store. Uh, one really good thing about the system and not having people smoking or opening is that there's a really quick transaction between uh, the in and the out. A lot of people are ordering their products online now. We're doing uh, over 100% increases month by month with our online sales since COVID started. So I do not expect a large lineup. Um, at, at this point, um, if you look to uh, to the right of us next, next to the five, if, if there ever is a lineup, that's all... Um, empty vacant right now so it would extend away from the five or, or any other open business but again i don't really predict uh, a lineup that big the way that we have our services running yeah we tend to have about uh, you know three to five st uh, staffs uh, at any each time um, we anticipating to have about three to five uh, POS systems inside uh, the store. Our average transactions by the time the customer walks into the store, by the time he leaves, uh, should take within uh, five minutes. Uh, by the time they are served, uh, they should usually take an average of about two minutes. So we're anticipating the transaction going very quickly and that's so uh, line up uh, with any lineup that will happen. Um, questions regarding parking. Um, so Indigenous Bloom is recognized as having parking issues. How will parking uh, be addressed on the property? Um, and also, what's the plan to have enough parking for people that visit your store? So a couple of questions about parking. Yeah, great question again. Um, we have three actual options at this point. Uh, first of all, we've already reached out to the businesses on both sides of us, spoken to the owners and are currently in negotiation for renting two of their parking spots. Um, second to that, uh, as you mentioned earlier on, if the city wants us to donate uh, in lieu of parking, uh, that is certainly something that we could do. But, but the third and probably most exciting option that we're working on, we're having a land surveyor come in uh, to the back, and, and I'm not sure if you have a, a shot of the, the alleyway uh, behind the store, but it's all shrubbery and dirty, uh, just stuff back there. Uh, so we're going to try to put two parking spots in there as well. Uh, we do know that parking is a big concern, and uh, and all three of our options uh, are on the go right now and, and, and available for whatever uh, council feels is the best fit. Yeah, I you know, we would like to have been obviously, you know, all the businesses are on Marine Drive, you know, have the same uh, similar issues with the parking. And we will, we will try to do as much as we can, you know, to have parking in the back. Um, but there's also parking on the site uh, by the gelato place. Uh, there's parking across the street. Um, I see that there's parking. Usually there's an issue during um, summer season. Um, uh, and then fall and winter, uh, usually uh, parking is not an issue, uh, as I have seen in the past. Okay, thank you. Um, there's some, uh, I've, I've published some other comments expressing uh, support for the for the business, for the proposal as well. Um, what are your intended hours of operation? Uh, you know, at this point, we, we run Chilliwack from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Th that decision is always at the discretion of uh, of council what, what's best for hours to fit with uh, the community. Okay, and just for the commenter, we will be, as part of the, um, the cannabis license referral application, we will be um, identifying and setting uh, with the province, the, um, at least the, the role of the city will be to offer um, a resolution of council if we get to a position of support, there would be a recommendation on to the province on the hours of operation. So that would be something we'd be working with the applicant on uh, moving forward. Um, there are comments about the potential for people, I, I, I'm reading into them perhaps, but um, 
taking the product off site and consuming it in the in the nearby neighborhood and some concerns about that and whether or not uh, there's any any response to how that might be controlled um absolutely you know uh, when we went out to the neighborhood that that was uh, one of the first concerns is, is the smell of cannabis. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, you know, only one fifth of the product that we are selling is pre-rolled cannabis. Um, everything else would be in jars where somebody would take out of the store, uh, take home and roll it. Um, th there's, there's a lot of comparison to indigenous bloom and seed and stone today and 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 i understand that the issue you know if i was going to buy a five dollar pre-roll uh, i would go to indigenous bloom grab it take it to the beach uh and smoke it but anybody could come from anywhere to that beach and smoke their cannabis we are actually going to be preventing it having us there is probably going to eliminate people from smoking on the beach because as i said we will have a security guard in front of our store every day for the first year. We'll also have overnight from 8 p.m. or sorry, from 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. We're going to have site visits from a security team, also just keeping people away from the neighborhood and preventing that type of stuff from happening. You know, statistics is showing that legal cannabis is reducing crime in communities uh unlike alcohol where you find liquor stores at every corner and people constantly going to the liquor store grabbing a case of beer and going and drinking it at the beach um obviously there's not a smell but th there's a, there's a lot more issues that come from that and nobody's stopping that um also we would like to work with uh the city and bylaw uh to, to make sure that that type of stuff that, the, that there is enforcement of that type of stuff not just from us you know, I mean, we would also, I mean, we also educate our customers who come in that, you know, we, uh, when people come in and buy the product to consume them in in a responsible manner, right? You know, uh, consume it at home. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, there's social the responsibility part. posters uh, talking about the risks of driving while intoxicated and, and all that type of stuff. It's things that you don't get from the black market or the gray market. Uh, I just think that it's a different type of clientele, the, the type of people that are going to go home and, and enjoy their product. And there are some questions about uh, the lineups. I know being a, in a COVID pandemic, I know there's concern with social distancing and there's so a couple of questions about how you might manage the lineups if there are, um, of course, the neighboring restaurants may also have lineups and how do we manage the limited space on the sidewalk? Totally. And as I said earlier, you know, we are fashioned to have people in and out of the store in a timely fashion that there, that there won't be uh, lineups. Our, our online uh, ordering and pickup is, is taking over right now with COVID. Um, I do understand, though, that with the COVID, our, our numbers inside is going to be smaller and there could be um, a lineup it will go really fast it will be really small and again it will be the opposite direction of the five uh if, if you'll notice just uh to the right of our sign that that whole storefront is uh, is vacant so it shouldn't be blocking anybody if it if it does reach that way uh, even though i don't expect that to happen to be honest you know there's a couple also things i would like to add um is you know we have a little bit of nook in, on the inside where the greener is so there's one potential is to have uh, line up uh, um you know be located at that space also we anticipate to open in june next year and looking you know how how things are progressing I know that right now BC has, you know, increase in, in the cases, but with, you know, potential what has been he hearing that um, there might be, you know, a vaccine coming and um, things that might not be as, as, um, as it is right now with COVID. And so potentially we might not have the same issues and, and, um, and problems. Thank you. I'm just um, publishing a couple other com comments that aren't questions, but are more um, comments. Uh, there's a question here. here. How would you engage um, the older population? Uh, another great question. Um, and a lot of our products these days, although they call it non, 
medical, recreational cannabis. Uh, a lot of the products that you find inside our store are in, in the wellness category, I guess, from, from topicals uh, to oils. CBD is a huge part of our business. Um, if you'd like, I could take you back to the chart and show you how much we sell in oils and capsules. Again, like I said earlier on, only one fifth of our sales are pre-rolls. We, we sell more accessories than pre-rolls, put it that way. Um, so any anybody like myself who, who appreciates the CBD stuff and I could go on all day long with the benefits of, of CBD for you, uh, you are you are covered. Uh, on top of that, I don't want to give away a secret, but we do have a 10% uh, discount for uh, any seniors who come into the store. Thank you, Mr. Hollander. I guess reading some of the questions and I'll publish them, there are some uh, concerns about the parking at, at the rear. If, if you were to um, install um, two parking spaces at the back of, of the existing building, as I know um, you're currently looking at. And just a question about um, Part of the discussions that we've had anyway is that they may be uh, parking that are dedicated for staff and, and I believe you had expressed um, in our discussions with Vikram that one of the other applicants that the li um, liquor and cannabis regulations branch of the province will only allow you, I believe, to have one entrance to the building. Is that correct? No, no, I, I think it's, you know, I mean, um, I don't think it's a, it's, it's a requirement. As, as per their policy, I think that was um, it was one of those things that Vic mentioned, but I think it's not accurate. So, but we will have this reviewed uh, by LCRB, and so there's always a potential if that's not allowed that uh, people can park on the back and just uh, the walk between uh, the building right to the left, as uh, in the picture. You know, it's just you know one minute walk right around the building right, to the unit. OK, so there may be customer parking at the back of the building. Correct. And we and we will obviously we encourage uh, our staff uh, to uh, to park uh, on the other sites and use transits too. Um, there's a question about uh, what what the I guess what the business can do to help prevent crime in the area. Yeah, and, and that, that's one of our biggest um, things that we work for. Uh, crime in the area uh, is, is a huge concern. And, and as I mentioned in the um, presentation, there will be no less than 12 security cameras, both inside and outside, front and back of the store. Uh, we are going to install better lighting we are working with the RCMP, crime prevention through environmental design. We're going to clean up the neighborhood. We've got security guard in front of the store for the first year, checking two pieces of ID, making sure people don't open their products and leaving. We also have a security team driving by doing up to 10 site checks between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. to make sure that not just our store, but the whole community is safe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, Chris, if you wanted to add to that. There, there's um, just a follow-up question of a similar nature, just about whether or not what happens after that year. I know you'd mentioned, Mr. Hollander, the um, the security on-site security for the first year. Is there a plan? Yeah, after that? You, you know that that's a thing. We we guarantee it for the first year, and if it seems like we still need it longer, then we have no problem continuing that. Um, you know, we're we're here for the best interests of the community uh, more than ourselves. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, we just, you know, we just wanted to see, you know, the first year of operation, you know, uh, about, you know, how the store is run, you know, how it's impacting the community and uh, if the security is will be needed, you know, f to extend it, we will do so. Um, you know, it's it's a very minimal cost to us and if that makes the community more safer and the neighborhood more safer, we will do so. Thank you. And I, I also want to mention Sorry. that that uh, our store, th there there will be no cannabis mentioned in any of our signage. So youth, vulnerable people, you you won't know. It just looks like seed and stone. The foliage in front, um, 
it's it's going to eliminate any any vulnerable people, any youth getting the wrong idea. We're not blasting the word cannabis. There's no uh, marijuana leafs in our signage. None of that type of stuff. We're we're gonna blend right into the community, be as inconspicuous as possible, have people in and out within a couple of minutes, and make a whole lot of money for the community. A uh, question directed to myself, um, just regarding whether or not the city would entertain a, a ban on public smoking, um, cigarettes, cannabis uh, in public spaces. So um, I do have correspondence regarding that as well that I'll present to council when um, we do bring something forward to council to see if that's something that uh, council wishes to entertain, uh, potentially going hand in hand with this proposal and, and similar applications. Absolutely, we'd love to work together on a on a no smoking campaign. You know, as we mentioned, we were going to contribute ten thousand dollars to the community. If that goes to a no smoking in the park campaign, uh, I think that's a pretty good use for it. Yeah, and and we will also educate our customers and clients. You know that if they do uh, buy a product, not to smoke it in the vicinity and to just take it home. So this is going to be just uh, mandated through through our uh, training, uh, through our all our partners and staff. I'm um, publishing some other uh, comments, just um, some support <coughs> and and uh, concern. I would just at this point encourage everyone that's um, participating and offering comments to to please complete the the comment uh, sheets. Um, and if you want to send me an email and I'll provide my contact information again as we start to wrap up closer to seven um, tonight. But please complete the comment sheets. They will form part of a future report to council and, the, and staff will uh, digest the comments that are provided in those forms and work with the applicant to address issues that we can uh, address um, before we then present them to council. So please make sure you complete those forms on things that you'd like to see uh, addressed as part of this. Um, question about at what age there is a seniors discount? Uh, you know, I mean, the, the discount, you know, to seniors, you know, se seniors, um, you know, I mean, we will not turn out in any customers that, you know, comes in and is, a, and is feel that it's, you know, uh, would like to have a discount. Uh, I mean, seniors, you know, usually, you know, we tend from 60, you know, and up. But however, you know, um, we work with every client and, and every needs. And if there's somebody that's uh, in a need of, of CBD products, we can always provide them. Um, like, you know, we mentioned before, you know, we have a large selection of CBD products, uh, you know, that appeal to the seniors um, uh, clients. Um, Currently, customers base is 30 through seniors, and we provided education through educated bartenders too, right? So, uh, not only we provide them with the discounts, we provide education how they can uh, use the product. And Thank you. There are some questions about um, use of cameras and whether or not there be any uh, cameras at the back of the building to prevent crime. Some additional yes. uh, concerns about uh, police resources that would be required to kind of monitor um the activities tied to this use uh, this proposal no you know as i said earlier statistics show that that, that cannabis is, is reducing crime where uh, you know alcohol stores are are increasing crime uh there will be no additional cost to the public we are covering uh the overnight security the uniform guard we're covering that we're putting in the lighting um, now, now we we are partnering with the RCMP for crime prevention through environmental design. Really, just taking all of their advice and and putting it to use. Um, the the back is a concern, and there's going to be cameras there. It's going to be well lit. Those cameras are monitored 24/7. Yeah, you know, I mean, it is it is in our uh, best interest to to make sure that. Uh, not none of uh, uh, security issues uh, would happen at, at our site. So we are um, contributing heavily uh, with uh, the security system, state of that security system. And like uh, Dave has mentioned, uh, a 24 hour basically security guard. Uh, first uh, through the operating hours from 9 to 11. And then uh, by drive by uh, from 11 to, to, to we open the next day. 
Also, just to mention also with the parking, you know, there are a number of businesses that are, or, or, like I said, operating without any parking. Uh, we just want to make an effort to work with the city. Um, just like the liquor stores down Marine Drive, um, who has no problems with, with anticipate the customers will have ample parking options. Um, and especially because so many businesses have closed due to COVID too, right? So this is one of those points that we would like to support in why we want to, you know, open in this area. Okay, thank you. There's a question about <clears throat> online, yeah, availability of uh, cannabis online and whether or not there's a need for the use. I don't know if there's any component of your business that's online. Oh, absolutely. We, we believe in um, a pretty seamless online uh, ordering system for pickup. Uh, we encourage people to actually order online uh, versus coming into the store, and just especially with COVID. Like I was saying, you know, we want to eliminate lineups. We want people in and out as quick as possible. And the fastest way to do that is by using the click and collect. You could visit our website. All of our products are there. Um, we, we have full service, uh, everything, all CBD, THC. Uh, you can order it online, set a time to come on in and, and pick it up, and you'll be out of the store in, in 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, there's a question about, um, so Seed and Stone would provide regulated Canadian product, currently not from the same regulators for Indigenous Bloom. I think it was a comment. Um, can you elaborate? Yeah, absolutely. Everything that we buy is direct from the LDB. It's all government licensed, regulated producers that are growing it. Um, everything that comes in the store has what's known as a COA, a certificate of analysis. So you know that there is no pesticides being used uh, still in it, that, that there's no mold hopefully in it. Um, any issues also uh, we have a, a refund policy with the LDB where you could uh, return products like that stuff. Um, the, the thing about Indigenous Bloom is they they don't have to follow the, the same regulations and rules that, that we have to follow. Uh, we report once a month. Every single product in our store is accounted for. Um, we have to destroy things that are put in our smelly jars. Um, the, the, the compliance behind running a store like ours is 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 a hundred times more strict than what you're going to get at a place like Indigenous Bloom. Yeah, and, and we also uh, get uh, on a monthly basis um, visit inspectors from the um, LCBD, and those are being checked with you know everything that's being uh, done at the store and how it's being run from uh, the products. Uh, from the how is laid out to the all the operations. Okay, um, I'm gonna. There's a, a question about whether or not there's an opportunity for there to be two accesses to the building. Was a question I asked, and and uh, Mr. Grisbach, you had mentioned that there's not a limitation in the way that the province regulates the use. You have to have only one access to the store, and that was sort of my understanding from our earlier discussion, but. Could you just elaborate on that a bit? Um, what, whether or not there is a limitation um, the province would establish uh, for how a store would be accessed? And I guess it sort of maybe I have a follow-up question of my own. That the question I would have is, um, <clears throat> is there an opportunity to put a limit within the license that would only allow for access off a marine drive? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the back option was just an option uh, for to allow if you know, people to be able to park on the back and come from the back. Uh, obviously, all the stores, you know, in BC that are approved by the LCBD who are being inspected. They are being inspected by the design of the floor plan. So if the province uh, sees that it's not in the best interest uh, of the consumers or uh, best interest of the store, not, not to have to uh, uh, locations or two doors there uh, front and back then we will confirm whatever uh, is being proposed to us or, um, or approved for us so uh, Greg I says to your point that you know if we are 
if the city of Weitergus would like to see only one um, door open to the front, we will have do so. And okay, have all the you. opportunity for, for consumers to park in the back and walk around the building in order to um, uh, enter our store. Okay, thanks. And there's a sort of similar question just about staff parking and I guess if there is is a requirement for staff parking, um, I think the expectation of the city would be that that would be the dedicated on site parking, but we'll have to, I think that'll have to be a component of our review moving forward just for those participating. Mm -hmm. um, that parking is one of those items that we are uh, working with the applicant to make sure that we can um, support that component of the proposal. Yeah, so we also, I mean, there's all we have, we there's options that we have. So obviously, uh, there's two, three, two options that you know uh, to have parking in the back. So we we reach out to the neighbors and have uh, dedicated uh, parking spots um, uh, within our neighbors, for example, for our um, staff. And if we do do parking on the back, then we'll have additional uh, parking spots. So there's possibilities of having more than two parking spots, you know, two as uh, required by the city and maybe another two uh, for our consumers. Obviously, we want to do the best as we can to provide ample parking uh, at our stores, knowing that on Marine Drive uh, parking is always an issue. Uh, but it will go through the you know approval process and obviously working with the city, we'll try to do best as we can to do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just skimming the, the questions. We have uh, quite a number of questions coming in. Just want to try to group uh, group like questions. Um, some concerns uh, being expressed about uh, children playing in the back alley and the potential for security cameras and security lights and that sort of thing. Um, some comments as well about noise, if you want to uh, speak to some of those issues. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I don't see uh, noise being a concern. Uh, again, this isn't a bar. Um, you've certainly had bars down in this neighborhood that there would be a lot more noise coming from a lot more action on the beach. Um, it's it's really quiet. We operate a store in Chilliwack and, and there's been, you know, farthest thing from noise complaints you, you get. Um, you know, we have a Spotify playlist. If you want to hear the type of music that'll be playing in the store, uh, that's about the only volume that you're going to get, and it's pretty, it's pretty light and easy listening. Yeah, through our experience uh, with the Chilliwack store, we have 99% um, uh, of customers who come in. Uh, when they leave, they, they, you know, they leave right away, you know, uh, to the, the destination. They don't just stick around, you know, around uh, the store. Um, uh, and then to answer the first part of the question about uh, about the lighting in the back, um, that, that that's a good point. You know, I'll be honest with you. I never thought that that lighting it and securing it would be something that that families wouldn't want. Um, if, if that is the case, that then I mean, you know, like I said, uh, we're we're here to work with the community. We, we just put out what we think would work as far as security, the cameras, the lighting go. Um, and if, and if it is a problem, it's not necessary. Uh, we're we're looking out for the best interests of the community. And, and you know, I want to point out again, there's a lot of talk about sitting on patios and lineups and stuff like that. But as I showed earlier on, a lot of these places are are, are empty. there's there's no business down here at all, and we really want to come in and revitalize this area. We want to bring people back to this. Um, we've been down in this area every day almost for the last week walking around talking to people i did see a point uh, someone mentioned that we weren't doing that i want to make it clear uh i was out there chris was out there we were talking to the businesses any homeowners getting them to sign support letters uh and, and listening to what everybody said and what all their concerns are uh, as we're doing now and, and we're going to take everything that we learn here today and, and go back and and revisit everything and still make sure that you guys get the best uh, possible store you can. Thank you. I'll, I'll publish a related comment just about <clears throat> um, some nearby residents not having 
been sort of approached for their thoughts on this application? I would just say on that in from a procedural. Yeah, uh, you know what? Um, I, I didn't go door to door knocking on people's doors, disturbing them. But but we spent hours and hours and days and days walking the streets, talking to people. Um, all those signatures that we got, they came from the community. They came from us being out there. Uh, the businesses, the homeowners, the, the, the people parking. We've talked to uh, the construction people who were doing the work on Marine Drive. Um, we, we've spoken to as many people as we possibly could without infringing on your privacy. Uh, I also believe we printed out uh, a couple of hundred letters and sent it to all of the homes in the neighborhood. So just so everybody was aware of this, we're not trying to hide anything. Um, we, we were certainly, we, I wish I could have spoken to, uh, to Harry because he seems to have a lot of points. Um, you know, but we were out there doing that. Yeah, no, just, just for the benefit of everyone wondering about the, the process so uh, and I will have a slide as we wrap up on next steps but um, so notice of this of tonight's public information meeting uh, was provided to all landowners and occupants of a property within 100 meters of the property and so and as I mentioned um, as we wrap up tonight I'll provide you an indication next steps but there will be an opportunity for members of the public to um, express their their interest direct to council if um, if at some point we present council with bylaws for first and second reading, if council gives those bylaws first and second reading, uh, those would be bylaws to change the zoning. Um, we would then be directed by council if they were supportive of giving the bylaws readings to host a statutory public hearing. Uh, with COVID, we are looking at um, similar digital options to be able to allow the public to speak uh, digitally direct to council. Um, but that would be the sort of the next steps in this process um, as it proceeds. Um, there was a question here about your contributions to the community, and I know uh, early on in your presentation you had mentioned, um, I think, a $10,000. Yes. Uh, uh, $10,000, 1% of our income profits goes to the community. Absolutely. And, and that's, that, that's just the beginning. Yeah, you know, we, we, we want to, you know, I mean, obviously uh, we live in the community and, you know, if we uh, do business with it in the community, we want to contribute to the community. And so one of the ways that, you know, uh, we can do that is as on the presentation is, to, you know, to the parks and the recreation, you know. Um, and that's our commitment that we do to every municipality that we go to. Um, and uh, and the city can uh, use this as their fit but you know we we prefer parks and creation because it just goes with uh, our vision you know uh seed and stone so that's that's a yearly commitment that we're willing willing to to do uh to the community okay um <clears throat> the question about whether any local substance uh, use or abuse services like sources have been um, reached out to in in looking at um, this this application. Uh, no. No, but it's that's you know. I mean, it's certainly it's certainly something we could do. Um, you, you know, I've uh, yeah, I, I don't think that uh, that any type of cannabis is should be referred to as a mess. Um, but 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 we are strongly against. You, you know, as I said, there's this uh, social responsibility. We, we do everything that we can to make sure that people are using uh, in, a, in a safe, mature way, responsible there's a, way. There is a question about why you didn't apply during the initial application window for White Rock. I, I'm not sure that there was ever a formal window, but it may have been at the time. The question may come from when um, I think the previous council was looking at the potential for um, cannabis retail stores in the city. Uh, I know earlier discussions um, involved looking at potentially a store in the town center, one in the east and one in the west beach as well. So I'm not sure if that's what the commenter is um, speaking to. Uh, another question is just about uh, why this location, um, knowing that there are some parking challenges, uh, recognizing that uh, Indigenous Bloom 
um, doesn't have the same challenges because they do have uh, more parking. Is there anything you want to add to that comment? I, you know, I'm, we just felt that uh, that the West Beach wasn't served. Uh, you know, uh, there's already one store on um, in the town center. You know, there's a store on the East Beach, Indigenous Bloom, and we just felt that this part of um, of uh, city uh, wasn't served so we felt that we we could come and support the businesses uh, the around businesses us businesses that are there that we spoke to they were all very supportive no, i won't say all but the majority of them were incredibly supportive of what this could bring to the community and 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 then bring traffic you know um, exactly we are open you know um, seven days a week um, nine to eleven uh, we're pretty busy throughout the year and we felt that, you know, if we come and and be able to help the, the neighbors around it, you know, spe specifically that area that we uh, put our, our application in. Yeah, it we really like thought with with the with the with the pier that, that had damage and was worked on in the construction and and all of the business out, out of that, we, we really thought the reason we chose this location uh was first of all there there's no re residential on top of it and secondly we, we we can add to this location you know we're not coming into an area that that's already uh developed there, there's a lot of growth still to come to this neighborhood and we hope to be at the start of it okay i'm, I'm publishing some comments just as people are offering their their um, support or non-support for the application i do want to try to get to some uh, comments and questions that haven't been um, brought up yet. Um, there is some concern. I think we've addressed it, but there, there, or at least you've spoken to it. There is concern about um, again cannabis being smoked in the area around the store and its potential impact on tourism. I don't know if you want to add to that, but um, it's another comment. Yeah, you know, again, as as we said before, uh, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that people aren't taking. Uh, stuff from the store. I, I'm willing to bet that you're going to find more people coming from other places to go to the beach uh, with with their joint or whatever uh, than people leaving our store and going there. Uh, well, you know, I mean, we, we are going to have uh, it's it is mandated, you know, uh, by the province that uh, any any uh, cannabis should not be consumed within 30 meters uh, from the store. And this is the reason why we are providing a security um, personnel that's going to be outside the storefront and not only um, looking at you know how the traffic is uh, played, but also uh, to see if anybody is within the vicinity uh, smoking. Um, and like like I said before, we are also going to encourage and we are also going to um, tell the customers and uh, educate the customers. You know, not to consume within within the parks and within uh, the vicinity of Old Marine Drive, just because of you know the nature of how busy it gets in the summer. Um, some questions about uh, the product. Um, the applicant talked about pre rolls being low sales. What about vapes, uh, dried flour, and other smoked forms of cannabis? Um, just a similar question about. Um, can the applicant speak to overall sales of smoked um, product sales? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, I, I could tell you right now our highest sales uh, is in edibles. That That is the edibles and beverages is definitely what we are selling uh, the most of. After that, it, it is flour. It, it would be both indica and sativa flowers. Um, but after that, surprisingly, it's accessories. So the vapes don't even don't even come up yet. Um, yeah, th th there's there's a lot more products in our store than just cannabis flour. So I to answer the question, if you wanted to, us to take um, all of the combustible products combined and give you a percentage on that, it, it's maybe 50 50. OK. Uh, I'm just publishing again comments of support and opposition to the application. Um, some concern with 
the um, potential for garbage being generated by the product you're selling and whether or not the business would look at um, either clean up or contributing to clean up? Well, of course, um, two things. One, we have a graffiti removal program. So if anybody tags uh, the buildings and, and any of the buildings around us, we'll have that removed. But more importantly, uh, don't get me started on cannabis packaging. Uh, it, it is the bane of all of our uh, issues. Uh, one thing that we do do is have a recycling program where we actually give a discount for people who return their re, uh, empty jars to us. Uh, it, it empty vape cartridges to us as well. Um, you know, that is an issue that 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 uh, I hope changes one day. The, the packaging is a mess and you're, you're totally right. And even when we get it from um, the LDB, it comes in big boxes and, and we're always having to recycle that. But but absolutely, we totally understand that's a, a big concern. And that's why we do everything possible to make sure that that stuff doesn't end up um, so, so on, what on we the do, street. Yeah. Uh, so, well, so what we do right now in Chilliwack, you know, we we have on a regular basis throughout the day, uh, we have all of our employees are uh, coming out uh, on the street and just uh, looking for any garbage and not just uh, cannabis garbage, any garbage that is out there. So this is another thing that we can uh, commit uh, to the Marine Drive and we will have our uh, employees walking with our shirts, you see in stone and walking and looking if there was any garbage and uh, loitering and with uh, any packages. Um, so the youth and kids are not seeing this. Yeah, I, you know, I want to say again, because I'm reading uh, the, the comments here and people are concerned about safety and security in, in the in the back. And, and as we said, you know, we're going to do everything possible to make sure this is safe. I guarantee that it will be safer once this door is open than it is now. And sorry, Mr. Holner, I'm just uh, publishing a few comments along along that line and just to the yeah. express concern about safety. Um, you know, you know it's important individual. for everybody to remember uh, cannabis is, is legal. Um, the, the government of Canada, uh, all of the provinces has made this product legal. Um, the, the days of reefer madness and people thinking that that it's that it's this terrible thing and, and you know, people are going to be breaking into cars for it. it it's just unproven they're, they're, what's proven is that cannabis retail will reduce crime not only does cannabis reduce crime cannabis reduces things like opiate use um if, if you if you look back and take a look at some of those pictures uh what we have to clean up what was going on in the area in our storefront um it, it was not cannabis use going on inside there um, the question about your Chilliwack store and whether or not it's located in a residential neighborhood. It's uh, it's uh, located in the um, in the industrial area, but there's um, you know there's within I think uh, about 500 meters uh, to a kilometer. There's an area where there's residents. Yes. So um, and it's located on 8050 Lichman Road. One of the comments. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I hope everybody got the opportunity to see the video uh, at the beginning, which also should should you know eliminate some of that uh, big bad scary cannabis shop. Uh, it's it's very elegant. It's clean. It's warm. It's inviting. Uh, our staff are incredibly intelligent. They're all trained. Um, yeah, I I, I mean. I'll leave it at that. OK, sorry, as those uh, participate, I'm just reading all the comments we're getting. Um, it's a really good discussion here. I mean, we, we are going to have security on the back. You know, we're going to have cameras. Uh, like I said before, we're going to have uh, security guard driving by both the alley and the front. Um, and make sure that nobody, 
you know, consumes within our vicinity. I mean, we have to also note that um, people could be buying, you know, the products not just from our stores. They could be buying from any uh, multiple stores around the area. There's one in Ditches Brim, obviously, and then a little bit on Johnson Road. Um, People tend, uh, generally don't uh, buy the product and just uh, and smoking right away. They usually take it home and smoking in their own private space. Um, what people do, uh, you know, if if they take it from the home and after, we have no control of it. But we will do almost everything we can to make sure that uh, none of our neighbors' uh, security is compromised. Um, and this is the reason why we are going to spend uh, state of the art security cameras, you know, uh, within our store. Okay, thank you. I, and just seeing some of the comments, just um, just about the nature of the consultation that you did, the walking around, and, and yeah, uh, um, I I don't believe I said we knocked on doors. I think we I said uh, we we walked the the roads, did everything except for intruding on people knocking on their doors. We were down there for days, uh, for hours, every day. Um, if, if you do live behind the building and, and didn't get uh, an envelope, I apologize. Um, I did think they were sent out to everybody. And, uh, and if you don't want graffiti in the back, like I said, we do have a graffiti removal program uh, to deal with um, any tags that, that may end up on the area. And I am publishing a number of comments that are related to things that we've spoken about. Um, I just want to make sure that we get uh, the visibility to the comments for all participants. And I also want to make sure we have a bit of time uh, as we approach seven o'clock. We've had about 14, 15 minutes left, but I do want to have just some time to um, mention to the public what the next steps would be, because those are some of the questions that I, I haven't published yet. Um, there is just a follow up question. I know you had mentioned earlier on about a pickup line or a call in before kind of curbside pickup. Can you elaborate uh, on that? that? That would be online through our website. Uh, the, the BC government has given us uh, the ability to do click and collect. Unfortunately, not delivery uh, yet that, that that could come in in the in the future. That that's up to uh, that's up to the, the province. Um, but but through our website, you can uh, come or go to our website, order, pay, and then show up in the store uh, and pick up. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is just to reduce the time a uh, customer comes uh, comes in and, and leaves the store. So uh, so one of the uh, options we have is, uh, as Dave has suggested, is um, uh, order online, pay online, and just come in, show the ID, and pick up the product and leave. So the transaction is literally within a minute. Okay, I'm just I'm publishing some other uh, comments again about um, the compatibility of the use in comparison to your Chilliwack store. Um, there's some other follow-up questions or comments about the garbage and um, whether or not there'd be a commitment for um, some contribution to help with cleanup in the in the community or in the area. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Oh, go ahead, Chris. We, we, we are doing it now in Chilliwack, you know. Um, yes, it is an industrial area, but we we do go out um, at the location where we have right now in, in Chilliwack, 8050 Liquormont, there's a um, hotel uh, behind our uh, storefront. So on a regular basis, every day, we have our employees going out of the store and just cleaning up any any garbages out there. Yes, I understand that we cannot eliminate it 100%. There's always going to be people who will be, um, you know, throwing out garbage, but we'll do almost everything we can to clean up everything that uh, it's outside of the store. I'm just going to publish comments again. They're they're more just comments. I don't know that they're looking uh, for a response. Um, the question yeah, about 
people potentially coming with dogs and whether or not there'd be any effort to clean up animal waste? Uh, absolutely. You know, our uh, our staff, as we said, they, they go around and uh, and clean up in front. I'm sure no one will be thrilled to do it, but um, yeah, absolutely. We're not going to leave uh, dog waste in front of our store on the street. Um, as much as I love dogs and, you know, wouldn't mind seeing a dog water bowl in front of the store, um, we're, we're, there's certainly, there's not going to be any dog waste uh, left on the floor uh, in front of our store, around it, behind it. I mean, we're trying to, to, to keep, you know, store nice and tidy and clean, you know. Um, I, you know, I, I think that most uh, dog owners are um, responsible and they will pick up their, their own dog's waste, but if not, we will do so as Dave said. Okay. I'm looking at a lot of the questions um, that I haven't published. There's 11 of them relate to um, just listening to people that you might have spoken with. Um, questions about ownership, what the ownership structure is. I think you've addressed uh, that question being a, an independent, independently owned business, but I don't know uh, if either of you want to elaborate on that. Well, you know, um, I'm just an employee of Seed and Stone, and so is, uh, so is Dave. Um, like I said, the president CEO is 100% owner of Seed and Stone. Uh, fortunately, he's not able to come today due to um, being in the hospital. Um, I wish he could have come and, ex and explain everything and provide more of the feedback. Um, maybe during the public hearing, we'll be able to do so. Um. I'm, I'm trying to avoid um, creating a debate. I, I know there are differences, different opinions within the digital room here. I, I just um, like to make sure we're getting to the, the land use issues or the issues that may result um, with the business as proposed in this location. So if there are um, specific questions about the, the business, I'm happy to kind of publish those. Yeah. I want to just to add to all of the leaders' uh, concerns. Uh, I want to just say that we want to work with the community. You know, we want to work with the city. Uh, uh, um, you know, community involvement in is, is the heart of what we do. Uh, and we will do everything we can to support our neighbors and work with our neighbors uh, to address any issues and not just just address us now. I mean, if any issues come arise during, you know, after approval, you will know, be willing to to work with uh, with the neighbors. OK. Um, what I think I'll do is being mindful of time. Um, we're about seven minutes to seven. So I'm going to share a slide that just goes through next steps. Um, I'm also going to publish a bunch of comments. So maybe um, Chris and Dave, while I go through next steps, if you want to uh, read the comments that I'll publish here, and um, you're welcome to respond to those just as we wrap up after my next step slides. Um, the first comment okay. that I just published uh, is just asking about why, are, why is the city even entertaining this? And what are the next steps? So if if in wrapping up tonight we don't get to your comment or question, I, I would just want to remind everyone to please um, submit uh, feedback forms. If you go to this link here that I've got on the screen, if you go to White Rock's main web page and you type in events calendar and you select the December 2nd meeting date within the calendar, you get more details to tonight's event and there's a there's a digital feedback form. So please fill those out. Uh, as I mentioned, they will be um, part of a future report that goes to council. So council will see your comments in their in their initial form. There's a support or non-support question in there as well. So we'll be able to say to council that um, 30 people completed the form and X percent expressed support and non-support as kind of a quick stat. And then planning staff will work with the outcome on the technical issues that you present in your comments as well. 
I'm trying to kind of set uh, a target for the receipt of those. So if you could try to have those completed by December 18th, so a couple of weeks from this Friday, um, that'll give us time to kind of organize things with the applicant amongst other other projects. Um, so that would be appreciated in terms of next steps. So we'll review all the feedback and look at potential changes uh, to the proposal with the applicant. Um, as I say, as I'm speaking here, I'm just going to publish some of the comments and I'll I'll pass the floor over to the applicant if they wish to respond or elaborate on some of them. Yeah. Um, so staff will work with the applicant to see if there are things that need to be resolved. And in doing so, we would look at potentially preparing zoning bylaws for first and second readings. So those bylaws would be presented to the city's land use and planning committee, which is essentially a committee of council. Um, we present bylaws for first and second reading. If council gives the bylaws first and second reading, then we would schedule a public hearing. And as I mentioned, that would be um, in, in light of COVID, that would be a digital public meeting where you, um, an interested member of the public, could express your interest direct to council. So they would be in the digital room with you. Um, and following that uh, public hearing, council has the opportunity to give third reading to the bylaw. And often third reading would come with with uh, conditions, legal conditions, things like requiring, for example, um, cash in lieu of parking if, if on-site parking was not feasible. Um, there may be covenants that we would register on title. There might be conditions that we would also require being part of the cannabis license agreement with the province. Uh, one of the things that I've sort of made note of in particular is the potential for a single customer access to the store. Um, and that's something I'd want to further evaluate with the applicants and, and present to council. And then uh, following third reading and the resolution of any conditions, then we would finalize bylaw uh, for final reading by council. Now council, of course, at um, when they're presented with bylaws for any readings has the opportunity to uh, deny the application or to defer making a decision pending additional information or consultation. So um, we are in the early stages of the project. Um, this is sort of the first opportunity to learn more. Um, and as I say, there will be another opportunity for you to express your interest direct to council uh, as part of a public hearing. Yeah, we appreciate all the all the comments and, and uh, especially the negative ones. You know, this is just how we're going to learn and, and be able to uh, be able to make the best store possible. Yes, and the same, you know, uh, we are committed to work with the city of White Rock and uh, with the city uh, the people of uh, citizens of uh, White Rock um, to make this reality and provide um, um, safe product uh, within the city and uh, that's competitive uh, in the market. Um, again, publishing comments, so I'll leave it with you, um, Chris and Dave, to, to pick out um, you want to speak to and hopefully those that are participating can see the comments as they're being published. Um, someone's asking who can they meet with directly at city hall to express their concerns and uh, with covid we're not uh, we're not meeting with members of the public directly for protection of their health and, and the health of city staff but i would encourage you to send um, completed comment forms with your interests expressed and also um, please um, feel free to send me an email directly as well and um, anybody could also be the, sorry for cutting you off there uh, Anybody could email us as well. You know, if you have any comments, concerns, things you think we should implement, uh, we're available for you guys. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, if if uh, our um, presentation is available uh, to the public, uh, there's my number uh, on on the last uh, slide of uh, our presentation, um, and it's also Vikram, the CEO. And feel free to um, call me, and um, and I can discuss uh, any concerns with you, and address those. Um, again, just publishing the comments and questions. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of opinion and, and concern being expressed. Um, some concerns with. I think maybe what are being um, 
conveyed as untruthful or misrepresented mm, comments. Yeah, I read that a couple times. I'm not sure what that was. Um, uh, you know, I apologize if I said I knocked on doors. I do believe I said I did everything but knock on doors. Um, yeah, uh, smoking. Uh, everybody smokes. Well, maybe not everybody, but uh, the majority of people that work for us smoke cannabis. It was cigarettes uh, that I was dealing with. Our staff are told not there's no smoking around uh, the stores. There's no cigarette butts in front of our stores. But uh, but cannabis, absolutely. Uh, anything um, else? Please let me know. I, I apologize if I did misspeak, and uh, and and I'll try to correct it. Okay, and just being mindful of the time, so it's 7 o'clock now. We still do have 15 people uh, in attendance. So um, just this one comment here is just a concern that um, there are still some questions that haven't been answered. So I'm happy to kind of, if, if the applicants are willing, we can stay on for another five minutes or so and just take any outstanding um, questions that uh, anyone wants and, and then we'll wrap up. Absolutely. Um, so again, just some comments here, but if anyone has questions um, that they wish the applicants to respond to. Uh, another question about um, recycling and, and all of the waste that comes with it. And, and yeah, we are going to do our best to clean that up. We do have recycling programs. People can bring them in and we are going to dispose of that stuff properly. Uh, there shouldn't be any cost to the city for the stuff that comes to us. We take care of all of that. Okay, some comments about wanting the rights to have weapons to protect oneself. What? Um, again, I want to try to focus on um, questions about the business, but I um, want to make sure that I'm publishing everything that people are, are providing. Um, so again, just I think in wrapping up, I'd like to ask that everyone that is participating, if we didn't get a chance to get to your comments or your concerns, please. Uh, complete the uh, the digital um, feedback form on the web page. Um, so if if um, people could do that, it would be appreciated. I, I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. So with that, I think I'll, I'll bring the meeting sort of to a close, but ask if, if people can complete the forms and send me an email if there's additional information that you'd like. I'm happy to put you in touch directly with the applicant if, if there are um, business related questions that you have for them. So um, uh, with that, I, the meeting is being recorded. So if you know of other people that wish to watch the recorded meeting, please um, we'll, we'll post a, a recording uh, on the city's YouTube page in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so it'll be available and um, we'll go from, from there. And if people have questions, if you don't hear anything, uh, let's say for the next two or three weeks, it's not because nothing is happening. It's because um, we're continuing continuing to advance the internal review and, and once receiving your comments over the up to December 18th and afterwards even, um, we'll be working on with the applicant on, on a resolution to potential issues. So uh, with that, I'm going to sort of bring the meeting to a close and again, thank everyone for their time tonight and please encourage you to uh, complete the feedback form. So thanks very much uh, to our applicants and thanks to our, our members of the public for participating. Um, Chris and Dave, did you have anything you want to add just as a closing remark? Yeah, yeah. I want to just thank everyone uh, for being here and uh, provide the comments. Uh, uh, we'll look on every um, comments and question they everybody has um, put out here. Uh, there was uh, quite a quite a few, so I was not able to read all of them, but I will read all of them and and possibly if there's anything I can address them. Thank you. I've just published a couple last minute comments, but for the commenter regarding potential idling in the in the laneway and, and, and sort of impacts the traffic flow along the laneway, if you can put that in a feedback form, um, I'll work with the applicant on a more formal response when this goes to council. So thanks again. Um, okay. Thanks very much. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Have a good night. Okay, good night.